Hey guys, uh, welcome to my channel Data Driven Decisions. In this channel, I talk about the data science and machine learning kind of stuff. So if you are down for that, please subscribe to my channel and share the content with the people who may be interested in these sort of topics. So let's further ado, let's get started. So today's topic is about the tuple data type. So in every programming language, you can see there is a data type called tuples. And it's a really interesting data type because it is almost similar to the list, but there is some differences. List or array, or there is some differences in this particular data type. So what are the differences now? So the difference one, the difference one is it is immutable. So that means in a list, suppose there is a list is one, two, three, okay. In list, the index position is 0, 1, and 2. You can change the element in that particular list based on the index. So, 1, 2, 3. If I want, I want to change it 1 to 2. In that case, if I change it, it will be something like this 2, 2, 3. So, this is going to be happen in list. Okay, in list. But, it is uh, not going to be happen these things not happen in tuple so that's the basic difference between the array or in the tuple or list and the tuple so that's the basic thing over here so we'll, we're just going to do the same thing whatever we have talked about new python programming and the coding environment so i'm just clearing the screen now and i'm going to be smart okay so i have already declared the particular list in python so list and tuple so first i will declare the tuple so i've given the name as a my tuple and given the elements one two three and for tuple you have to use the first bracket in python so if i run this particular cell Again, I'm running. So you can see one, two, three. So the my tuple list looks like this one, two, three. Okay. And again, I'm also going to uh, declare a list just to show you the comparison between the Python and uh, tuple and the list. So if I run this cell again, so you can see one, two, three. So over here, I have used the third bracket just to declare as a list or array. So it is something like this. And as I mentioned, I want to change one into two. Okay, so for list, I can do the similar sort of. Thing. So, so you can see like index position of one is basically zero. So Python index position is like this. So one index position is zero. Uh, two is one. Three is two. So in this way, it is happening. Okay. So if we want to get the index of one, so you have to use as zero this one and then you have to assign as two if you want to change it to two okay so if i do this uh okay if i run this cell and see my list how it is looking now it is now become two two and three the same sort of things okay so i have reassigned one as a two in the particular list in python and now we want to do the similar sort of thing in tuple in python okay so my tuple is this so you can see the my tuple is this one two and three okay so if i go over here and want to reassign index position zero is equal to two the similar sort of things the index will be the same between list and the tuple so if i run this cell you can see the tuple object doesn't support item assignment so you cannot assign a particular item to a particular uh oh, sorry a particular element to the uh python tuple or any tuple so that's the basic difference between the list and tuple and uh, let's see the same thing in julia also let's go to the julia notebook so in the julia notebook i have also declared the tuple in this way so my tuple is one two three so you can see that the similar sort of format. So if I run this particular cell, same thing is happening. So the notations are almost same. Okay. 
so if i uh, use an array like i have given the name as my list just to show you the comparison python and julia but basically in julia it is called the array so one dimensional array okay so if i run this particular cell okay so my list is looks like this like one two three same as the python okay <clears throat> and now i'll try to do the item reassignment in uh, julia okay so before i do that i just want to show you a little thing a little information so basically in Ju python what happened is that index of one is zero index of two is one index of three is two but in julia index is little different so index of one is basically one index of two is basically two index of three is basically three so in python index start as zero one two three in this way and in julia index start at one two three four so in this way it is happening okay so this particular information will help you uh, to understand this thing now so earlier what happened is that in python if i go to the python notebook over there i have as i my list 0 as 2 so index position of 1 is 0 so i've given it as 2 but now in julia i have to use at 1 so you can see that so index position of 1 is 1 so i have used a 1 equal to 2 Okay, so if I run this cell now, you can see that it has become like earlier it was 1, 2, 3. Now it has been become to 2, 2 and 3. So 1 has changed to 2 in Julia array. Okay, Julia list. And now uh, try to do the same thing in Julia tuple. So if I run this cell now, So if I run this particular cell, you can see that it is uh, something like this. Okay. If I do this particular thing, so you can see that my tuple one is equal to two. So method error. So no method matching set index. So it is not also possible in tuple in Julia. So that's the thing between the Python and Julia now based on the tuple. Okay. And uh, the last thing I'll show you is that a simple like method. Uh, just to show you that so with the simple method on tuple basically so so in tuple so so my tuple is basically now looks like two two and three now uh, sorry one two or three so my tuple has now changed so it is become one two and three so if i want to if i want to find out the number of times a particular element is repeated in the particular uh, in a in a tuple so on list what you can do is that like uh, we can use a count function so in python tuple so my tuple is a tuple dot count count is the method and use two two is basically the element okay so two has appeared one times in particular my tuple because it is one two three so if i run this particular cell you can see that uh, two has appeared only one time so that is why it is showing as one okay and uh, so this is the thing over here and if i go to the julia notebook here so in julia notebook you can do the same thing but the notation is little different here so the notation is basically uh, you have to use a particular function called count and then you have to use in this notation like i this i equals to equal to 2 if it is i become equals to equal to 2 then give the count of it basically so if i run this cell now so you can see two has appeared only one time so that is why it is coming as one okay and uh, so now if i change my tuple to a different form like my tuple is become now a a b one two so i have used some of the like i have used a two times then b then one and two okay so i have reassigned my tuple is something like this so if i run this cell okay my tuple has changed to a a b and one and two okay it has changed to this 
and now if I uh, run this particular cell and if i equals to equals to a like it is similar to a if i run this cell so we come to so earlier in my tuple uh, there was one two three so that is why a2 is coming only one time so that is what is coming was one but over here i've changed it to a, a b one and two so now a has appeared two times so if i give a so it will tell you how much like how many times it has been uh, repeated like so a has repeated two times that is what is coming so if i you can i can do the similar sort of things in python also like in python if i run this cell so you have to just use the con function in python that's it and now if i run reassign my tuple to this a b one two and if i run this cell again count so two so uh, so that's the basic difference for tuple between the Python and Julia programming language. I hope you like the video uh, and I hope it is informative to you and to your friends family. So if you interested to get more information similar to this or more data science kind of stuff, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to post more such a videos, more interesting videos. I hope it will help you in your data science journey. Thank you for watching my video. Thanks.